thing to where a certain place keeps coming to your mind or an event or something. He works in different ways. He never sticks to just one. That's too easy. He works in many different ways. And so once you start to recognize them, then you know when the Lord's speaking to you. That's very important. Most people don't know how to listen for the Lord or how to recognize His voice when He's speaking to them. Yeah, they don't. And, and the churches don't teach you. And the other way I learned was getting out of the church <laughs> and realizing that I even needed the need to hear Him. Because I always felt something was missing. You know, you, you have, you know, the Baptists are probably one of the most sound, doctrinated churches there are. I mean, you will you will be raised on strict fundamentals without a doubt in the Baptist church. They know the fundamentals. They know the doctrines. They protect them. They guard them. His life, death, his resurrection, very sound doctrines. But you will never learn how to fight in spiritual warfare from the Baptists. You get that from the, the Pentecostals. You know, and then, you, and then there's other aspects from all the other religions that have something to add. Mm -hmm. Because they all have something they offer, but then they all have something they miss. That's like what the Lord said. It's like nobody has it all. Nobody has it all right. Everything's in pieces. I'm not telling people to go church hopping, but, <laughs> you know, you, you do what you have to do. I, mean, I needed to learn warfare. And so I, I learned that from the Pentecostals. Mm -hmm. and, but I got my sound doctrine basis from the Baptists. Mm -hmm. And then when I was sick of all the denominations, I went non-denominational. <laughs> And then finally, I just got out of the churches. The Lord pulled me out of them. There, there is such a strong um, influence to conform to a very narrow set of doctrines if you stay with one church. Yeah, and, and especially if you're in the same church for 10, 20 years, you've heard the same sermons over and over, and you know what month it is, what, what series he's going to be on. <laughs> <laughs> and he just says the same old things, and you walk out of there, and you don't want to be in there to begin with because you're tired of sermons. Mm -hmm. You know what he's going to talk about. You're not learning, you're not growing, it's dead. The only reason you're doing it is because you feel obligated. You know, the Lord would rather have you home on a real Sabbath day on a Saturday, take a half hour and read his word, than worship him on a day that's not his Sabbath, and not get anything out of it because your heart's not there. You don't want to be there to begin with. Mm -hmm. You're doing it out of duty and obligation. You know, he never changed his day to Sunday, and, and people will hee-haw up and down on this one. Constantine changed it, the Vatican changed it, Paul changed it, <laughs> the Lord had never changed it. <laughs> you know, and I think people would realize a big difference that if just for one weekend they celebrated Saturday at home as a Sabbath instead of going to that church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And they could just see the difference for themselves. You, you do feel a difference. It's like an anointing on those Sabbaths. I agree with you on that. Yeah, you know, that's my best day to write. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write my articles is on Saturdays. You say, what, you're working on a Saturday? Well, it's my time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, he talks to me and I write, you know. and so, You know, you, you can feel powerful and running up more on that day than any other day of the week. I agree with you. It's a special time. Yeah. A, a lot of Jewish households will uh, have a special small ceremony both at the beginning and and at the end of the Sabbath to acknowledge it. And, and that's rather nice, too, where you take a few moments and just, oh, this is the Sabbath. Yeah. I, I've, I've been trying to learn. I'm not one of these people that have got it all right already <laughs> because I just come out of the last year to where we really need to be celebrating these, these feasts of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I have friends online that uh, I call, I have one online that I call the rabbi and, I asked him what when one's coming up and what we're supposed to do. and <laughs> You know, he's got it all down. But most people, like, you know, me coming out of the churches are clueless. Mm -hmm. You're just clueless. And then you get lost into the haze because there's, you, you can't identify with the Hebrew terminology is used. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't even pronounce half American words right. i getting nowhere with Hebrew. Well, you do fine. <laughs> I do fine. <laughs> you Jeff, do just fine. You ragged me up and down a wall, but you know what? I have my own dictionary. Oh. Well, I, I wouldn't worry about it too much. You, you know, uh, Moses had his problems from time to time, too, with that. Yeah, well, he he, had a, he was a stutter or something. Mm -hmm. And I just find it a convenient stutter because when you're speaking live, especially on radio, you have no time to take a break. Mm -hmm. You have no time to collect your thoughts. That's why I do the sigh thing all the time. People hear me sigh. <laughs> I'm just collecting my thoughts. 
<laughs> and the, and the pronunciation of some of these uh, names and ancient words, yeah. they're not fixed. Um, there, are, there is more than one accepted pronunciation. Well, you know, I, I yeah. pronounce words the way they look. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Maitreya, it looks like Maitreya to me. I know there's an I after the A. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, the first word of the Bible, the first word of Genesis, uh, Bereshit, it has 16 different spellings. You can check Google. You can put in <laughs> any one of the other ones, and it'll give you the others. There's 16 of them, and there are almost as many pronunciations. They can put the stress on one uh, syllable or on the other, and the last letter can be pronounced as an S, as a T, or as a TH. And all of them uh, have people who say, well, this is the correct pronunciation. And it's like that with a lot of... Uh, Hebrew words. Even here in America, uh, where you hear people pronounce Hebrew, there's uh, an Ashkenazic pronunciation, there's a Sephardic pronunciation. Well, the, and if you go to the uh, on the web to download the sound files, they're different depending on uh, who put them together and what their <laughs> tradition was. Well, there's as many de different denominations almost among the Hebrews and Jews than there, there is or are not as bad as Protestants, but you get the picture. Uh, they, they're very well divided, too. Jews will say, two Jews, three opinions. <laughs> and it's no, it's no different than what we are. Mm -hmm. You know, every, every time somebody disagrees, they started another denomination. <laughs> 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 we, have, we have over 60,000 different branches, and people would argue with me and say there's over 200,000. But I think it's stretch, you know, I'll sit here in my two-horse town and say there's 60,000 because I don't see 200,000. Mm -hmm. uh, but that many divisions, you know, and you see there's a church on every corner in America, and everybody's their own, doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. right, but a lot of them will align with a, a bigger part, of, you know, a, you know, a, the Protestants or Methodists or whatever. But yeah, I mean, we're all we're all divided because you know, man uses religion uh, as as a chance to define God. Mm -hmm. It's not lost. It doesn't need to find. Well, one of the amusing things I like to use as a uh, litmus test for some uh, Christians is there's a, a Methodist church here that very does wonderful work with orphanages. And they basically, if they don't feed these kids, they don't eat. Uh, they're in a desperately poor area. And they have a website, and uh, they have a, quite a lot of local support. But often with other churches, I'll say, by the way, there's this orphanage. Would you be interested in, in looking at their brochure? They immediately change the subject. Mm. And, and I'm, I'm thinking, well, where's the love there? Yeah, you know, I'm going to find a church that's got the soup kitchen thing going and giving some clothes out, and I haven't found a Bible-based church yet. Mm -hmm. They all talk it. <laughs> yeah, but I haven't found one that feeds the poor mm -hmm. or feeds it's, the hungry and, and helps clothe the poor and... You know, I haven't found one yet. If feed the children had a church, I'd be there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, John, thanks for calling in. Well, thank you. See you next week. See you next week. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Uh, next week I'll be talking about, well, we'll just be talking again. I'll try to talk about the Edomites. I'll try to talk about America more in, in, in uh, last day's prophecies. Love having you call in. I'll see you next week, folks. God be loved to you all. <laughs>